Good morning, everyone. Good early morning. Good St. Patrick's Day morning. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. And it is an exciting Friday again. It's Botanical Day here on Craft Round the Clock. So this is my Craft Round the Clock segment. And you will also find me on my Tinker's Cart Art page. So welcome and good morning. I won't lie, I just rolled out of bed. I probably am wearing pajamas underneath my clothes. Anyway, no judgment zone, right guys? Good morning, thanks for popping in. It's been um, a wonderful morning already. Pat, I loved your little um, board you're working on with your flowers. I love that idea, it's so cute. I can't wait to see it finished. And be sure to stick around all day because until 7.30 tonight, there's crafters and creatives every 30 minutes. Hi, Mary Jane, Sheila, Patty. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for popping in. We are on a shorter segment today, 30 minutes. So this is gonna prove a point to you guys. I don't have time to do my art. I don't have time to craft. I just, I, I really want to, I have no time. 30 minutes, look what everyone does all day long. So just sit down and get started doing something different this morning. You know that I'm an acrylic painter, an oil painter, a watercolorist. I love to teach. I love to teach absolute beginners. So if you are watching and you've never touched a paintbrush or pencil, you can still do it. This is never too late. Good morning, Kathy and Laura. Thank you guys all. I will come back and answer questions as we go. So I'm going to do a little um, sketch, a watercolor sketch for you this morning. When I hear botanicals, I think of botanical sketches and botanical paintings. This is gonna be very loose. It's not gonna be tight botanical painting like you might think. But that's what I thought of when I heard botanical and all my followers have been wanting to do some watercolor. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I do an awful lot of sketching, on location sketching. And I have my little sketchbook with me everywhere. And honestly, once you get started, do a little sketch and pen. The watercolor part is just filling in, like you're coloring in a coloring book, really. And you could do it with colored pencils or watercolor pencils too, if you wanna get started a, a little differently. So my little sketchbook is a little sketchbook. And I, like I say, I have many of them and I carry them. And if I have 30 minutes before an appointment or I'm waiting in the car for someone or I'm just sitting having a glass of wine somewhere and I'm traveling, I love to sketch. So botanical, that's a little um, sketch that reminded me of something today. But this is what I do. I sit and I sketch. Sometimes I start in pencil and don't finish. But wherever I go, that's in Outer Banks, I do little sketches and then I put where I'm at. There's Disney. I don't know where I'm gonna pop up here. Oh, a little urban sketching trip we did in Orlando with the Orlando Urgent Urban Sketchers. So anything and everything, it could be a household object, but little sketchbooks will be your friend. And I'll talk more about that on my social media and in my groups, which you can find more about. So what I did, and I have the tracer for you, if you wanna try that. I made a tracer. I simply scribbled on the back with pencil, and then I traced it onto my watercolor pad. If I'm out sketching, doing my little sketches, I am just freehanding and I'm not trying to be careful or make it look like anything. It's wonky, it's off, but I just have fun sketching. And then you get to the point, so I know we only have 30 minutes, so I went ahead with my ink pen and just traced my lines. I just use a waterproof um, liner, a little, little uh, marker. Just make sure it's waterproof because if it's not, then you get some smudging. This is a micron. I just like these little two aught or, or three and all I simply did was trace the pattern. Like I said, if I'm working small in my sketchbook, I don't trace. It's supposed to be off, but I'm doing a bigger project so that you can see. And I have this pattern for you. If you go to my link, my Mighty Networks, my free group, the link should be in the description. It's pinned to the top. You can download the tracer and then follow along on the replay. So that would be fun. I have all sorts of watercolors, but for when I'm out sketching, everything I take is in this little bag. I've got a little tiny palette of watercolors. All I did this morning was take a little spray bottle and spray the paints because they were dry. I'm using the dry pans. This is fun. All we're doing is coloring in and you can go outside the lines. That's what's fun and you can spatter and you've got your lines to go by. You can just simply use a little detail brush. You could try one of these little watercolor brushes if you like. They're inexpensive. They're not um, a lot. And I'm really going to just go ahead now 
And let's see, I've got my water. You can, I don't know if you can see everything. I want you to see the painting more. And I'm simply just having fun and filling in. Seriously, that's how easy it is. I am taking, I'm gonna push over so you can see the palette too. I am taking just a lot of water on my brush, going into, let's pick leaves. I'll go into some green. I have a little palette to mix on right here on my, let's pull it closer so you can see. I'm just putting on here, mixing a little bit. And look, it, it's like you're coloring in your coloring book. You're gonna go along and just fill it in. And I'm not being careful. I'm going to go and some, look at how, how random that is. I don't want it to be perfectly filled in. I am going over the lines and I'm going a little short of the lines. I am doing it loose. I want it to be fun and loose and playful. And you can use different shades, but for now, let's just find where the greens are. Let's just put little bits of green in there in the, the leaves. And I have a couple shades of green here and you can mix, but I've got a blue green too. So I might just go in and see how quick I'm doing this, you guys. And I wanna keep light. I had a little too much pigment there. I'm gonna go with a little more water. I want it to be light and see-through and fun. In between our flowers, there's greenery. Do we worry about where it is exactly? No, we'll just throw little dabs of green in here and there. Sometimes I'll go into just my yellow and I'll get a lighter leave. And look, I'm gonna sh keep showing this to you because I don't want you to get caught up with, the look to this piece is going to be loose. Look at how loose I did those leaves and, oops, and stems. I just took a little brush right over it and I'm not tediously working to get it in the lines. We are having fun. I am gonna take my paintbrush after and simply spatter it like this as well, make it even messier. So if we embrace the wonkiness and the messiness, it's then we're not struggling and we're having fun with our painting. Has anyone worked in watercolor? Hi, Robin, yes, perfect question at the same time. It's just watercolor. I use my little palette here because it's my travel piece, but honestly, these colors get me through lots of paintings. And I'm dabbing into the green, sometimes the dark light, sometimes the yellow. And I, I'm sorry, I know there'll be a lot of questions and I will go back, but I will try to keep uh, looking at them as we're going. It's just that with 30 minutes, it's gonna go pretty fast. And I want to show you how little time our takes if you want to just jump in and try. Uh, there I am on there, so I'm going to see if I see any questions. Watercolor, yes. Laura, the traceable. I have a free private, I have a free pr uh, group that's private. It's off this platform. It's my own site. It's called Mighty Networks. There's a link in the description, and there should be a link there should be a link in the description, but you can always message me and find out about that group. I have just posted the tracer there. If you don't find it, you can always message me and I'll get you the link as well. I also have a paid membership over there, which is fun. We do a lot of acrylic painting, step-by-step, -step, super simple, beginner sort of things. But I have a lot of designs. I create all my own designs and you get uh, three a month plus a tutorial. So even if you're a more advanced painter and you're just looking for ideas and designs, they're, they're there too. But we have fun. I tell you, the best thing of the membership is really the community of other uh, creatives. So just going along and plopping in a few different shades of green. I'll miss some of these leaves, I am sure. But I just wanted to start with the leaves. They're more in the background usually. And that's where we start. Look at this one right here I didn't even get. So... Um, Janine, I don't use the watercolor pencils. I have them, but you could certainly do that for something like this very easily. I believe you just sketch with them and then you wet them maybe and they kind of blend. So yeah, definitely give them a try. Um, I have all the things, but do I, 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 have, I go back to my favorites all the time. I go back to what I really am used to. I have another big kit of watercolors, but mostly, honestly, I use my little uh, travel palette there. So we want to add some color. These are sort of roses. Uh, some, this is an open rose, some roses. Let's get maybe some pink in there. And so my, my, my uh, method is I spray them first so that they're not dry anymore. I'm taking brush loads of water, putting it in my color, pull it on my palette and kind of mixing it out. And um, I want you to be able to see the palette a little bit because sometimes it's easy for you to see how I'm actually working. And 
when I'm painting with my acrylics, I always show you highlights, shading, make the form, you know, the, the, the element look 3D. Here, I'm not worrying too much about the shading and the highlights yet. Highlights, you can simply just leave the white paper. And I can go back in afterwards with a little deeper shade of what I'm using um, and add a few little darks in for highlights. But again, this is very loose, very... Um, look, I'm painting upside down and barely looking, and I'm just kind of sketching it on, and I don't mind little spots left. I don't mind paint traveling over the edge. Let's just basically lay in some colors. Pick whatever you like. Don't have to use what I use. Pick what you like, and just go ahead and fill in these. I went right over here on this one to that flower, so I just took it off with my finger, because I know I want to maybe do those flowers, maybe something else. And I'm dipping into shades of pinks and kind of an orangey. I'm mixing the colors as I go. I see a little leaf under here. I painted orange, but I could go over it. I have this really frilly little tulip in here that you hardly see, but let's pop into some purples now. I'm really just off the cuff, picking them out, not thinking about it too much. And what's good about watercolor is you use this one pigment and you can make it very light by just adding a lot of water, or you could use a little more of the pigment and you got a darker shade. And I could take, since I have that darker shade on my brush, I could go into the middle here and sort of just give it a little dark here and there. Maybe some yellow flowers, let's see. My yellow's usually pretty green because I'm always dipping into it when I'm painting leaves. I could clean it up a little bit. And hey, Jody, I'm trying to watch, but it's hard to, I need, I need those teacher eyes in the, in the back of my head to watch as we, uh, as you guys are asking questions, but thank you for watching and it will be a great fun day here. Happy St. Patrick's day. Um, and what a way to celebrate is to look at all the projects everyone's doing today. I'm on here now at eight, but every half hour, we've got a new creator coming on. So stay tuned and uh, see what all gets done today. And I will put the finished pictures when this is done up on the Mighty Networks as well. So you can see this and go back to it. And the recording, the replay will be up as well. Thank you, Laura. And uh, beautiful colors, but I'm just dabbing in. I'm not paying attention even. You could really go with a more limited color palette and, and think about it a little more. But you know what? This is going to be fun. This will be kind of like, maybe this one will be kind of red poppy-ish. Um, who else has spring fever? I'm in New England, so it's... We had a big nor'easter the other day. It's melting, but still. Um, some of my little crocuses and my little things were trying to come up, but they are um, looking a little welted today. So not the best example of botanical. Today on my little early spring guys trying to come up out there. So now I'm going to just try to get something, some color on all of the flowers. I love this pink. Let's do this one a brighter pink. my little tulip and then it's just leaves that I missed really and these tulips sometimes are a couple different colors but let's stick with the pinkish orange I'll get a little of this color and see what that does for us it's a little orangey but that's all right maybe add a little pink in there they're kind of two-toned a little bit and let's just, this is that, and I don't know the name of it because forgive me, I'm not a big gardener. There's that statusy stuff or the backgroundy stuff. It's kind of a blue green, that's kind of very light. So let's just poke something in there. I'm gonna go more blue, maybe a teal color. Again, I don't even sometimes, look, I just put things colors that I like. I love popping teal into just about anything. And no one is going to examine your painting and say, oh, there's not a flower that's really that color. You don't have to worry about that. You just have fun with it. I'm hopping back and forth between colors. I'm not rinsing my brush sometimes. I would do that when I have to go to a lighter color. But if I'm just doing all these greens, I can hop into the light, the dark, maybe even into my yellow a little bit. And so basically... I've got the, them filled in. Oh, I've got that little bit of blue-green tealy thing down here. 
I want my little pod to sit on the ground, so I might just take some sort of a blue-purple, just put a little shadow underneath here maybe so that it looks like it's sitting on the ground. And watercolor is great because look, it stays wet for a while and I could just sort of mush it out, even just add water and make a quick, simple little uh, shadow. Again, this is going to be sort of a simple painting. I'm not gonna try to paint the water and the glass and all that. It's indicated, people will know it's water and glass. Maybe I'll take a tiny, tiny bit of uh, blue over here and maybe, I do love my teal. Really watery, I'm not gonna paint it all in, but I might just indicate here a little bit of water. Just, just that, that's enough to indicate water because this is loose, remember. Um, so now I want to just add a few darks in, in places just to give it a little form. It's a little color booked in now, just like coloring in, just pretty plain. But now we can go ahead and in each of the colors that we use, we could go a shade darker or just simply use a little bit less water and get a, get more pigment. So if I've got the same color that I used on this, I've got a little bit of a blob of water there. Um, I could go in now with just a darker shade and in some places where I know, you know, if, if a petal is in front of a petal, I could put a little shadow behind. And that's not even bleeding as much as I'd like. So I'm just gonna add more water to my brush because I want it looser than that. I just wanna do this sort of thing. And same here, I could just get some little shadows. I'm not breaking it up as much as I could saying, oh, there's a little petal here over that. Just dab in some darks. I'm gonna swing over to more of the orangey color and do the same thing. Center of the flowers are usually a little darker. You could just pop a little darker in those places. Again, that got a little bit uh, too pigmented. I had more water. Who wants to go out and try watercolors now, right? I think it'll be fun. It's just a small little kit. You don't need much. I go into, if you look, if you actually go to my YouTube channel, Tinker's Cart Art, I have some sketching videos on there, I think, I believe, about how I actually go out on location, what I actually use and you could take a look there. There's a lot of free classes and videos there on painting. If you'd like to take a look, I would love that. And they're coming alive now, and I'm taking some of the maroon that I used on the pink flowers, throwing it into the orange. I like to kind of cross-pollinate my colors so that it, it's uh, cohesive. The painting just looks a little cohesive. I'm taking some orange, and I'll pop it into my pink flowers, and maroon in the others. The yellows, I'm just going to take more of a gold, maybe just a dark like ochre color and just kind of shade those a little bit. I'm going to throw some orange in there too. I bet that would look good. Watercolor stays wet for a long time, which is nice on your palette. You can keep using those colors. It's not like my acrylic sometimes and my gouache especially dries up in no time. Pop in a little bit of orange into those yellows. And you know what? Even some leaves. Some of your leaves are shiny. They're going to reflect the colors you're using. You could take a few little dabs of whatever you're using and put a little bit into your leaves. I'm using a little pink there now. And just for fun, like I said, I like to just take the colors. A little pink in those purple flowers would be great. Just that. Look at the difference of this little guy here who doesn't have any pink yet. Popping a little pink in. I'm not even looking where I'm doing it. And it kind of just adds a little something. My leaves, I'm gonna go to a little darker shade, maybe a duller shade of green. They're a little bright and I want some bright, but the bright bright ones won't pop unless I have some dull ones. So uh, if you mix your complementary color, so if I take my green over here and I'm gonna mix a little red or pink with it, it's gonna dull it down. It's gonna make it more of a army green which we need sometimes to give our eyes a rest. We can't have it all super bright. I'm gonna put that here and there on any of the greens I've painted. And then I just swiped right over a flower, but that's all right. These guys are a little lacking in color. Let's give them a little bit more color. Uh, I want a dark, kind of like a blackish green almost now too, maybe with a little Prussian blue in there, something dark because you're looking at a bouquet and in there's some dark areas. Again, if you don't have the dark areas, your light areas don't pop like they should. We could throw a little bit of dark here and there. 
a little dark on these stems since they're in the water kind of or behind the glass. Just a little bit of dark here and there. How are we on time? We have 10 minutes. We could paint another painting, you guys. And thank you, Kathy. Thank you, guys. Um, again, I'll keep, I'll keep looking in case there's a question right there that I need to answer. So, again, um, Tinker's Cart Art, that's me. I'm all over social. And do you know why I have that name? Since today is St. Patrick's Day. I have had an Irish import business for over 25 years. Retail stores uh, in Mass here. Um, I've traveled around the country setting up at Irish festivals. It was my parents, my dad and I, my mom and dad started, and then I went on the scene, and we um, carried it on. I just closed. I just retired. I just closed my business at the end of January. This is my first St. Patrick's Day with not working all the time. I've been actually going to the St. Patrick's Day things, which is cool. So I... I um, am super excited to be able to spend more time just doing this, my painting, my membership, all my teaching. So it's kind of an exciting time, but a little bit of a bittersweet time on a day like today. Uh, but you know what? I've been able to go out and go to the parades for a change and enjoy things instead of working. So it's all good. I think I'll add a little green to these little bluish bits. Now, see how quick I did that? I dogged it. And look at what I've done here. I've got little blobs of paint right? Like little spots that just ended up because we're painting quick. But you know what? Sometimes painting quick is going to force you into loosening up and not caring so much. And when you step away after you're done painting, you're going to say, wow, that really looks good. It didn't have to be. I didn't have to struggle so hard and try to get everything just right and make it look like a photograph. What do we not want to do? We don't want it to look like a photograph. That's not a compliment. It used to be. I used to be so impressed when someone said, oh my God, I love your painting. It looks just like a photograph. I'm like, oh, it looks like a photograph. I did it. I did it. It looks like what it should. Not anymore. Now I throw the paint on. I have fun. I paint loose. I use just brush strokes. And it's so much more fun. The paintings are more whimsical and bright and happy. So don't get caught up into the trap of trying to make it look like a photograph. Nobody, we can look at, look at your phone. You get 100,000 photographs right there at your, at your fingertips. You don't need to uh, paint like a photograph. And this really could just about be done, really. But I'm gonna add some little spatters to it. I wanna make it like kind of looser. So I do this to a lot of my paintings, my watercolors, even my finer ones, my house portraits and things. At the end, I'll take and I'll spatter little dots of watercolor here and there to make it just look a little looser and more artsy. Um, and you might like the look and you don't have to if you don't. So I just take colors I have out here. I might go into my greens a little bit, whatever's there. I'm gonna load my brush up and, and with paint and then I'm just gonna tap it on and just get some little, some little spots. And down here I might do some blue. And it's just a little bit of spotting. Isn't that fun to add? It's so cool, I think. Let's go and do a few blue ones, kind of where the water is. Um, yeah. I did a little, I went, I got over uh, carried away, but I like it. Now, you know what's really fun after I'm sketching? And you know, it's hard. I might lose my whites as we do. We paint and we go crazy. I have a little white pen, and it's the only one I have found that works to write on top of my sketches, over my paint, and it really shows up. And I'll even use it on my acrylic paintings sometimes. Um, good morning, Tracy, thank you. It's a Uniball Signo. It's just a little gel pen of sorts, I guess. I find it in the scrapbooking section or I just order a bunch on Amazon. And I use them in my sketchbook all the time. Let me show you where I put my sketchbook. So if I have a sketch and it's gotten a little heavy, and you can almost see it in this one, um, all those little lines in the ocean are done with the little white pen. So afterwards, you can go and add sparkles to things, and it will show up. It's kind of nice. Let me see if there's something else that I have that in. Little street scenes and things. I will go back and add the little white in the roof, for instance, and it just adds a little air of light to your painting. So I could go in now with this little pen Make sure it's working because I go through them pretty fast and this one is getting to be empty a little bit. But let me just get it started. I'm raving about the pen that's not going to write now because it's probably at the end of the, it's probably empty. But if you could imagine this, 
This is a little pen. You can see how I've started and written a little bit on the board there before. You can just go in now and add little touches because you can't get your white back with watercolor. That's the tricky thing. First time I did it, I said, oh, I can't paint like this because I love to layer my paint on and at the end get brighter and brighter and then throw those white highlights. You have to work the opposite. You have to save your whites or use a masking medium, but you can't really go back in, but you can with this little white pen generally, and you could add like little vein lines and just little doodads here and there if you wish. So that is a good thing to have, and guess who will be ordering some today? Um, some of those pens today. So, and I'm really surprised because I thought I would be running really over. Oh, hydrangeas are fun to paint, and they're fun to paint in acrylic too, and they're pretty simple. I just get the sort of the shape sketched out, and then I sort of dab, a, I start with my darker color, and especially on one side, maybe make it a little darker of the purples or the pinks, and then get lighter and lighter, just mix a little white, this is I'm talking acrylics with your paint, and start dabbing, and then get very bright on the opposite side on the left. Little dabbed brush strokes, and careful not to just fill it in completely like a, like a ball, but just leaving some spaces, some little green behind. Um, you could even start very dark for the whole little ball and then just bring your lighter colors up, leaving those little darks peeking through, which would be kind of cool. So anyways, I've talked about my Mighty Networks. You can find the uh, pattern or simply look at a photo or a dried, I mean a flower arrangement and just pencil lightly, loosely. You don't need every vein and leave and stamen and blah, blah, blah. Just kind of get really loose. But when you go in with your pen, you're giving yourself those guidelines and that makes it feel a little safer. Like, okay, I don't have to uh, use my lights and darks and define everything in there. I did it with my pen and now I'm just coloring it in, right? Just coloring it in. And it's just a little botanical sketch. I'm looking at this now and even the flowers could have been a little lighter with more white showing through. And you can certainly go in now and just add more darks. So start very light and then just keep adding your darks. Good morning, Janet. Hello. So you guys have a fabulous day today ahead of you. And it's going to be wonderful. A quick little thing over what I used here. Oh, I didn't even talk. I just used a watercolor pad here. I like these um, odd shapes sometimes. I have little rectangular ones. This is the hot press, which means it's very smooth finish. I sometimes like my watercolor on the smooth. Sometimes I like it on the cold press, which is that textured, bumpy watercolor that you see. Comes in all size pads. Little, I like the moleskin. I don't have a cute, fancy little notebook that's homemade like this. I like the little moleskin. Um, they're about this big. Keep them in your pocket. Make sure you get the watercolor paper one, though, because some are just sketching. And just keep it with you. With You just need a pencil. And usually I'll use a mechanical pencil because I like the finer... Uh, line I get and not so smudgy. I use just these little watercolor um, brushes. I don't use them so much for the watercolor and uh, the water in the barrel, but I like the little tip. It gives me a fine tip, but then I can press down. It gives me a broad stroke. So a pencil, a little, really just one little brush is all I carry around in that little, my little bag of tricks. My little uh, palette folds up. Look at how, look at how that folds right up small. My book is small. I keep a little plastic cup for water. This is actually, I think, from a package of toothpicks, and you can empty the toothpicks out like I do. And you can, I actually fit my sprayer bottle right in here in my little bag. And then I just have some little paper towels cut up, a few extra microns in case I run out, um, and an eraser. That's all you need. And you could just get started and bring art into every day. And like I said, sometimes I just sketch my keys on the table or a bottle of ketchup or whatever. It's practice. You're getting your drawing skills, but it's also fun because you're creating. So um, I'm going to go back now, answer any questions you have. I'll put the replay up and be on the Craft Around the Clock page. It'll also be in my Tinker's Cut art page. And I really appreciate you guys coming in so early and watching. And I'd invite you to stick around on Craft Around the Clock and check out that page if you're a Tinker's Cut peep because... Um, it's really fun. I'm getting very crafty. I love to create things and I'm mostly a painter, but you might see me making bows and things sometimes as um, I keep watching Craft Round the Clock too and learning all these new skills. So thank you guys so much. Unique Pat, I can't wait to see your painting, uh, your, your little wood piece done too. Thank you. You are up super early this morning. I'm going signing off. I'll see you all next time. I'll see you next week. Bye.